ladies and gentlemen, it is always a pleasure to have you join us. And today, once again, it's my pleasure to welcome Dr. Benedict Afari. Over the past couple of weeks, we have been talking about family planning, taking each of them and going into detail as to what they do and what they do not do. And some of the things that you have to be aware of, keep track of them and report to the hospital if you find anything wrong. Today, it's my pleasure once again to welcome Dr. Benedict Afari, an obstetrician gynecologist, to take us through another method. Let's invite him. Doc, you are most welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Director. <laughs> Always a pleasure to have you. I thank yeah, you so much too. for your time. So yeah. today we're going to zoom into another of the methods. Which one are we going to talk about? Um, so today we are doing two permanent methods. So one for the women and one for the men. Okay, interesting. So we start with the women. So we okay, women as first. usual, women first. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so we're going to talk about the permanent method. Ladies and yes. gentlemen, we have spoken about a lot of them. A lot of methods that we can use for women. But almost all of them are reversible which means that you can stop them somewhere along the line. But today we are going to look at one that is not possible almost to stop it or yes. to reverse it. Yeah. So, Doc, yeah. please go ahead. Okay. So the permanent method for the woman is called tubal ligation. But because the fallopian tubes are two, so we call it bilateral tubal ligation. Because if you just do one, you cannot say it's a permanent method. So bilateral tubal ligation. All that it means is that we want to separate the tube so that a sperm and an egg do not meet. You know, for pregnancy to happen, there should be fertilization. A sperm and an egg will meet. Then the sperm and the egg, they meet in the fallopian tube. So once we do this method, we separate the tubes. That means a sperm and an egg will not meet and you cannot get pregnant. And it is a permanent method or you cannot reverse it. Good. So let's see. So for a woman- Look, she maybe has... before we go on, please, one question. Yeah. yeah. Um, we have two tubes, yes. yes. But can somebody decide that I'm going to tie one and leave the other? Uh, if you take one and leave the other, it doesn't become a permanent uh, method of family planning because that means you can get pregnant through the other two. Mm. And most commonly, you know that when a woman gets a, a topic uh, pregnancy yes, and it happens in one of the tubes and that tube is taken off, she's left with one tube which she can get pregnant naturally through. Yes. So what it means that if you just take only one tube of you have not done anything because there's a <laughs> second tube <laughs> that you can get pregnant with. Okay. Yes. So it, that's why it is bilateral. bilateral. For you to get the effects you want, then it should be the two tubes that you are ligating or you are separating. So that is the explanation. So let me let people just see this. So this is a diagram that shows the female reproductive system. So you can see that we have two ovaries. That's what produces the egg. We have the fallopian tubes by each side of the womb. Then the womb itself, then the vagina, then the rest is just the perineum. So all that we are trying to do is that we separate the tubes from each other. So you could see that there is this kind of a mark on the diagram showing that there's some kind of a separation. If I should come a yes. bit close. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that yeah. is all the tubal well, ligation. Like they are pegs. Yeah. They are pegs. Good. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So this is what we achieve at the end of the day. So everything that we are doing is to make sure that we separate the two tubes so that they don't come into contact with each other and a sperm and an egg do not also come into contact with each other. So that is what we are trying to achieve. So this is bilateral tuba ligation. Okay. 
So let's continue. Good. Thank you very much, Doc. So yeah. who who can have this done? Yes, yeah, so um, because it's a permanent method, um, it's women who do not want to get pregnant again. They do not want to have any more children. They are candidates for bilateral tubal ligation. But the, sometimes there's a caveat. A woman may go ahead and have, or maybe the clinician or the doctor may go ahead and probably do um, an impromptu tubal ligation for a woman, even though it is very controversial, probably when that woman's life is really at risk. Let me just give one or two examples. Maybe a woman who has a grand parity, she's giving birth more than five. She has more than five children. Sometimes a woman can even have about 10 or eight children. <laughs> and the last, the pregnancy, the current pregnancy, because of an obstetric indication, we had to do CS. But that woman, if you look at the nature of the uterus, the problems that you encounter, you realize that her next pregnancy could be very problematic and even the delivery, the outcome may not be good. So that client, for example, we may have to do a bilateral tubal ligation, even though, as I said, very controversial. But if not, I mean, recommended wise, we need to make sure that the client will consent to the procedure very, very important. She has to give consent to the procedure. And let me say that even though sometimes in this part of the world, women always want to seek the blessing of their partners before they do this method. There are some women who may <laughs> do it without telling their partner. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes, they may do it because they know that the, the multiple pregnancies and the deliveries um, can you know result in very bad complication and even mortality. So sometimes they themselves may op opt for it. Of course, they are adults, so they can give consent even if the partner does not consent to it. I mean, so they should know that as a woman, once you are sound and adult and you understand everything about what we are going to do for you and the fact that you will not be able to give birth again and you understand all that and you append either your signature or you uh, time print the consent form then we are good to go but um in practice what we realize is that most women usually less than the age of 35 years some people may come up with regrets later in life so there is this thing about regrets after bilateral tubal ligation. And it is a very serious challenge. So we need to make sure that before a woman consents to the BTL, that is the bilateral tubal ligation or the permanent family method, family plan method for the woman or permanent sterilization. It's also called female sterilization. We need to be sure the woman is really aware of what she's doing before because there are some women who have regretted after doing bilateral uh, tubal ligation. Yes, some women have regretted after doing that. So we are a bit yeah. careful. So we try and do it for women 35 years and above. The cutoff point is because ideally, even when you are 35 years and above, fertility declines. And usually most women may have some uh, problems with their pregnancy. It doesn't mean that a woman who is 40 years cannot give birth or who is 45 years cannot give birth. But we're just saying it is a research or um, um, a recommended age that you normally work with after 35 years. If possible, you don't have to. But I mean, never say never. Women are always getting pregnant. <laughs> yeah, and people have examples, you know. <laughs> oh, yes. Especially for yes, people yes. who are going to school spending a lot of time in school, getting married at the age of 30 years and maybe having the first child at 31 or 32. They may have the second one at 33 or 34 and they may want to have a third one. But all what it means is that please seek medical care. Seek yes. care from a professional, irrespective of the age. 
seek care from a medical professional. Doc, um, thank you so much. So this is irreversible, so to speak. Now, after the woman has had it, can she immediately have sex or she has to stay off sex for some time? Okay. So this question, um, after the tubal ligation, it works instantly. You don't need to abstain from sex if there are no other reasons why you should abstain from sex. So for example, the tubal ligation, you can do it immediately after delivery, usually within 24 hours after normal delivery, tubal ligation can be done. Then uh, six weeks after delivery, we can also do bilateral tubal ligation. That one is called interval bilateral tubal ligation. So immediately after delivery, within the 24 hours, it can be done, or it can be done at six weeks. Then we can also do it when we are doing a cesarean section. So at cesarean section, it can be done. Okay. So these are the times it can be done. So for example, if you have delivered normally as SVD or spontaneous vaginal delivery, and we do the BTL for you, what it means that usually after delivery, most women wouldn't want to have sex. They will have to wait probably after the low care has stopped. So uh, two weeks, if there are no issues, or sometimes after six weeks. But even if for some reason you want to have sex within a week or not, hmm. you are not going to get pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying for some reason. <laughs> usually the, the recommendation is that you should allow for the low care to stop. The low care usually stop in two weeks or sometimes after six weeks when you have come for review and we are okay that everything is fine you know because some women even from normal delivery they may have some um perineal test that yeah we, we so mm -hmm. that one should will take some time to heal so if all these are done i mean there's no wound there's healing and the woman is comfortable she can resume sex so by that time uh, your BTL2 has healed. Okay. And like I said, even if you need to resume sex earlier, it is not going to affect the BTL in any way. You will not get pregnant. Yes. Okay, that's good to know. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have just joined us today, we are talking about BTL. And that is the permanent method for women where they cut both tubes so that she cannot become pregnant because the sperm and the egg will not be able to meet. Doc, thank you so much for explaining this to us. Now, are there any complications? Yes, yeah, so like every surgical procedure, there will be pain, there will be bleeding, there can be an infection, right? Then for the BTL itself, it can fail, even though the filler rate is very, very minute but it can fail. What it means is that the ligature or the suture we have used can slip off. That's so if thread. it slips, the thread can slip off. If it slips off, that means the occlusion or the closure that we are looking for will not happen. So there will still be a way there that the sperm can go through and meet the egg. Then sometimes there may be an opening, an abnormal opening called a fistula. Yeah, so when there's an abnormal hole or opening there, what it means is that a sperm can actually go through that and go and find an egg. <laughs> but you realize that some of these pregnancies may result in, let's say, an atopic pregnancy or abdominal pregnancy because of what has gone on. So maybe the fertilized egg may not find its way back into the womb and will sit somewhere and have an atopic pregnancy uh, or abdominal pregnancy, you understand? So yeah. these are some of the complications that can happen. But people have sometimes associated uh, BTL with menstrual problems, but BTL doesn't affect your menses in any way. You know, your menses... What is controlling your menses is the hormone, the ovary, and the womb itself. But mm -hmm. this BTL is what we are doing is just to 
cut the tube and separate them. So mm. it's not going to um, affect your menses in any way. And it's not going to let you go into menopause. Some people have that kind of misconception. <laughs> <laughs> that if you do BTL, you may go into menopause or your menses will not come. You may go into menopause because of other reasons, but not the BTL. Or you may go into, your menses may not come or you may have problems with your menses, not because of the BTL, but there are other problems that can cause your menses not to come. But the BTL on its own will not affect your menses or will not let you go into menopause. So the woman should be rest assured that you having a BTL, all the BTL is doing that you will not get pregnant. That okay. is all. Yes. Then, Doc, I think it may be helpful that once you have done it, to wait. You know, to wait for some time. <laughs> so you said it can be immediate. People can have sex immediately, but Maybe it would be good to wait for a while to make sure that there's been that um, closure. There's been healing and everything. Oh, definitely. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Because, I mean, if you had a PTL through CS, this, the CS has to heal. If you even had your yes. PTL just after delivery, normal delivery, you also have to allow the woman system to heal and get back to normal. For those who are having their BTL at six weeks, I mean, after the procedure, you, you can wait for a week or two for you to recover before you decide to have sex. Okay. But for sex, you know, anytime we talk about sex after delivery, whether CS or a normal delivery, we have the cutoffs, but we always say that the woman has to be comfortable before. Exactly. exactly. We resume sex. So that one is very, very important. Yes. Exactly. Thank you very much, Doc. Today we have learned about BTL, and this is a permanent kind of um, contraception, which means that there's no way the sperm will go and meet the egg for you to be pregnant. But there are some caveats which he has shared with us. Thank you so much, Doc. It has been a good discussion. We have learned a lot about family planning. All we are saying is that people should please take care of themselves. Reproductive health is your health. What you do depends on you. The doctors, midwives, nurses, psychologists, other people are available to help you, but the final decision really rests with you. So please take care of yourselves. Doc, once again, we are most grateful. God bless you for all the time that you have spent. I'm sure we'll have other topics that will invite you because OMG specialists, it is um, an honor to have you to talk to yeah. us about family health, especially reproductive health. So, so we come your way again with another interesting topic. Stay blessed. Bye for now.